Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 8. Thoughts? This episode is called The Laws of Inferno Dynamics. Beautiful pun. Another episode I love, like most things MCU, especially MCU TV stuff. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we have the classic scene of, you know, someone working for, like, a criminal, you know, coming to them and saying, you know, these terms are not satisfactory. You're not paying us enough or you're asking us to fight someone that we shouldn't, so this kind of thing. And, you know, they get really severely punished for it. And because he has superpowers, he makes, he fills the guy's lungs with diamonds. So that's, yeah, wow. And, yeah, um, Mace is told about the, the fact that Ada is an android and we get a joke about you know oh but I was kind of sexually attracted to her which just yeah I I don't mind examining the issue of, you know the the issues brought up by the idea of like sex robots I just feel like this was they they didn't really examine them they just made a joke about just yeah anyway Moving on, and yeah, they talk about, you know, Mace is on his own side. And there's some talk about, you know, who is in charge. I like, okay, so apparently Fitz is very scared of clowns because he specifies clowns with knives in the dark. That's very specific. That was not just like off the top of his head. That's something that's been on his mind. Can you do recon? Depends. Does recon mean take a look? Because then yes. You want to play with fire? Let's play. You know, normally I don't watch Let's Plays, but I'll make an exception for this one. And yeah, Mace does fear Ada and realizes that Radcliffe does not, which, you know, by the end of the episode is pretty clear, yeah, that is definitely going to come back to haunt Radcliffe, which, you know, there were already some signs. And, yeah, Eli is working his way up the periodic table, I think this might be the point in the episode where he's making water out of nothing at all, which, yeah, that's that's a compound, not an element. So he's, yeah, it, his powers have progressed significantly. And good discussion between Eli and Robbie. And yeah, so basically, you know, we get some, some backstories and monologuing. Basically, Eli turned evil because of racism. I prefer when they can tell stories about how awful racism is without, you know, depicting an evil non-white individual, but at least they are bringing up racism. Does she think? Maybe about electric sheep? I assume that was a joke. And I don't need to, to respond. I think I might. I'm, I think I might steal that. The next time someone says something really snarky to me, I'm just gonna not even respond, but but say to someone else, "Yeah." And <laughs> yeah, Fitzsimmons unleash about Mace and Mac calls him out to his face like holy crap and then Colson and Mace and Daisy joins in discuss and I like that by the end of the you know oh right I came here to tell you something this is what I came here to say are you are you not dead yet I get that a lot but that means I'm still around and and then he makes several like he's 
almost mixing his metaphors like he's you're you're drunk or you've got you've drank your own Kool-Aid or maybe you've drank too much Gatorade. Wow. And yeah, you know, so the various quakes were indeed not Daisy. It's the the stealing, you know, he's not creating out of nothing, he's taking it from from somewhere. And that is of course also quite consistent with you know, basically what he's doing is dark magic, and that's something that, you know, yeah, the idea with dark magic is that, you know, at least as depicted in a lot of fiction, I mean, I mean you know, it's, they're not, they're not making something out of nothing, they're, they're taking, you know, there's that old idea that the, you know, part of dark magic is taking the life force of good people and using it to do something that you need life force to do. This is your end game, not my end. And Yo-Yo does the X-Men Quicksilver thing, albeit with less wedgies. And yeah, so Ada is shot and she feels the pain even though she's not dying. That's, yeah, and I mean, at least, I, uh, Radcliffe has definitely done some, some awful things. You can kind of understand where he's coming from, you know, if she's going to serve as a decoy, you know, yeah. And, yeah, so Daisy has to get away, but when she lands, she's on camera, and Mace shows up to control the narrative. I quite like, so they put him in this uniform that somewhat resembles some of the the uniforms that Captain America have worn in the MCU. And, you know, at least he does stand up for her. And I like that, you know, so apparently Phil was hoping that Daisy would be the new director, and she says, maybe in the comic book. And Mac and Yo-Yo kiss. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little torn. No, I mean, I guess there was, like, she was expressing that she wanted them to be together. I don't know, I would have liked slightly more, like, you know, just the tiny bit more of, like, an informed consent. Like, if, you know, she she's, you know, talking about, you know, you you keep going back and forth, you know, are we friends, are we a couple, what, you know. If he just said, um, you want me to make it clear that we're a couple, and then she says yes, and then he kisses her because that's, like, implied, but yeah. Moving on the Daisy gets a lanyard and I love I will never not love excited Gemma Simmons like take what we have for you just <laughs> and you know Koenig couldn't be there to to give it and yeah um was it Nathanson has been sent to to get the yeah to retrieve all the all the research for the LMD project it will take place under shield adult supervision which I agree with Jimmy Carr that does sound like x-ray vision anyway the the yeah and <laughs> it, yes sir this is a team that tries so he really does just do that to, to everyone working for him like all the time and yeah the the you know the guy accidentally activates the the thing and the door opens and he sees you know and I appreciate that we did I was for just for a minute there maybe only seconds I was like are we really gonna have to wait an entire week to find out what he saw in there that was so shocking thankfully not and 
yeah, you know, he asks, what are you doing? And Ada says, I'm sorry, I know how much this hurts. And snaps his spine. Or, or I know how this feels, something like that, you know. And yeah, we see that May is Ada's prisoner. So that was, you know, because earlier May was sent to retrieve Ada and seemingly did do so, but that is an LMD of May. And, you know, she says, I'm right where I belong. <laughs> so I'm guessing this LMD has the synthetic human brain that Ada made after reading The Darkhold while Radcliffe was singing and thinking of words that rhymed with Ada. Yeah, um, looking an awful lot like a robopocalypse, and I'm here for it. So, IMDB trivia for this episode, and... Yeah, when May questions whether Ada the android thinks Colts and jokes maybe about electric sheep. This is in reference to the novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, more commonly known by its film adaptation Blade Runner. Absolute classic. Like, if you, you know, I, I'm not sure I would make it the first Philip K. thing you read, Philip K. Dick thing you read, but it's definitely, it's, it's excellent. And let's see. See. Yes, in the science lab, they make reference to the Demon Core. Historically, it was one of the three plutonium cores used during the research and building of the atomic bombs at Los Alamos during World War II and was slated for use in a third bomb had it been necessary. The core was named Demon Core after it was involved in two critical accidents that resulted in the deaths of two physicists at the lab. The title is a reference to the laws of thermodynamics, the first law of which Eli Morrow believes he is breaking by creating matter. The episode serves as the last in the first pod of episodes for the season, subtitled Ghost Rider. And this is quite a good way for Ghost Rider to go out. I can imagine this might be the very last time we see him and... Yeah, you know, Robbie really wanted to, to make up for the, yeah, and this is, this is certainly something he can do to, and let's see, yeah, at the end Colts implies Daisy should be director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Daisy Scoff says maybe in the comic book version there's a reference to the comic books where she does become director when Fury retires. Yeah, I had guessed that it was, it was something like that. And let's see. Right. Uh, Coulson tells Daisy not to count out um, the previous owner, Robbie. She asked if he thought it would make it back. His reply was, The last Ghost Rider did. This refers to Johnny Blaze as the Ghost Rider. Right. So, yeah, if this is the last time we see Ghost Rider. I just want to say, you know, I think they did a really great job. I really appreciate this thing of actually seeing Ghost Rider working to, to you know, to take people out for, you know, yeah. This I, I did not think that the, the two movies quite delivered on that the way, you know, the first movie was in too much, way too much of a hurry to say, oh, and now Ghost Rider is not working for the devil anymore, you know. I, I think it was basically, it came across to me as a way for them to, to a, a compromise basically, like they were like, look, if you're gonna put this character who literally works for the devil, whose superpowers come from the devil, if you want to give him his own movie, you have to make him not work for the devil from extremely early on, and yeah. I, I really felt like this show's version of Ghost Rider delivered. And... Let's see. Yeah, this one points out at 19 minutes. Um, May... It's the, it's the LMD of May that is boarding the Zephyr. And... 
think that might be about the yeah it's, uh, a number of the best lines from the episode are in the episode's MTV memorable quotes section and yeah um, I think so I'm just gonna real quick find the best one that yeah, um, I quite liked Daisy sarcastically saying, I can't believe she's a robot, she's so lifelike. And Aid is like, thank you, I'm learning. And yeah, the, the exchange, I'm becoming a god, you better be, because the devil's coming for you. That was also, uh, you know, yeah, something that frustrated me in the first Ghost Rider movie, not as much in the second one but they did right here is here no this is actually like we've gotten to see Ghost Rider do really cool stuff so him not quite being you know yeah him being slowed down here feels satisfying also because it didn't just happen just like that this is not someone who can just do that Eli built this thing you know it it took him a while to to make this thing that is to, yeah making Reyes so yeah and let's see. you don't have to twist my arm I wouldn't dare you might whip my ass I'm not some meat puppet who's just gonna smile and roll over on command. No one's asking you to roll over, but you do have a nice smile. And I think Oh right, also Ada making this brain that actually is more convincing. You know, yeah, building an LMD that's more convincing as human than she herself is. I want to say is called the singularity, you know, robots building robots that are better than them. And that is one of those, that's the real turning point. That's the kind of thing that, you know, you better hope that they're on your side or we are screwed. And that was the keyboard. And let's see. I think that might right and I like Max saying don't call me turtle man <laughs> and I think that is yeah um, <laughs> also the thing you know time for you to work your magic dear I don't perform magic doctor magic just means deception uh, yeah I just meant it's time to start connecting the power cells I really need to update your cache of common vernacular and also quite enjoyed Agent Coulson. I took the liberty of bringing Dr. Radcliffe up to speed. Yes, quantum cells, flaming skulls, androids. Just another day of shield, huh?